What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Star Wars Explained. We have with us again Mr. John Jackson Miller to talk about The Living Force. Last time, we avoided spoilers, but the book is out now, so we are going to talk spoilers. If you haven't read it yet, this is your warning. But if you have read it, uh, let's have some fun and talk about the book. <laughs> so last time, uh, we talked about which Jedi character was the most fun to write, and uh, you talked a lot about uh, Uriel Poof. So what drew you to them first uh what was it the robot chicken sketch or just the, the <laughs> idea of having all this flexibility surrounding him uh it was the flexibility it was the, f the fact that that character was a more or less a blank slate uh and i wanted to have some nuance uh on the council i wanted to have some personal conflict on the council i wanted the, there needed to be a character or two uh somebody that everybody's kind of like yeah uh still still here uh <laughs> <laughs> and they're having to work around this person uh, because, again, if you think about it, this is you know, this is an outfit that has multiple people on uh, on the council that have been there for uh, you know more than a hundred years, more than two hundred years, and we know this because of the High Republic. Uh, and uh, you know, I, I figured that uh, yeah, everybody would sort of have their opinion of uh, of that character, and uh, you know, I have uh, I have. Um, you know, a number of uh, pairings of characters uh, where they will interact, uh, and uh, you know you'll get this. You'll get the sense that uh, this is a this is a the, you're picking up in the middle of conversations that have been going on for a very long time, uh, and uh, you know there there's uh, it's certainly you know with all of the characters uh, there's a sense that they're not. Uh, even though the Jedi Council itself, as a body, I am you know kind of describing as uh, you know very very stratified, ossified, stuck in its ways. Uh, there is a little bit of personal growth happening uh, with some of these characters. You begin to see that some of them might not be there for the long haul, uh, having nothing to do with Order sixty six. Um, you know, Eth Koth is one of those characters where I wanted to show him as, yeah, you know, maybe this thing isn't for me. Uh, and of course, we've now had you know more recent content in in, in years that have kind of suggested uh, that he has a different future from everybody else. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, again, you know, I I was trying to play within the boundaries of what was known about these characters. Uh, and I didn't want to establish anything that was going to make it impossible for anybody else to write something, you know, further down the line. I've always said, you know, sometimes, you know, the, the person that you create problems for might be yourself uh, in another story. Uh, but I, I did want to sort of indicate that, yeah, these are these are all real people. They're 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 co-workers, they're friends in most cases. Um, and they have they have personalities and they have they have arcs. I love that you mentioned Eth Koth and yet yeah, the ability to just kind of connect these dots uh, because he is he's not part of the Jedi Order, as we see in the Darth Vader comics. So what was it like to go through all 12 Jedi Council members research where they started, where they ended? That seems yeah. like an insanely daunting task. Um, and it was something where, um, you know, I, I read all of their dark horse, um, you know, uh, EU uh, appearances. And even though, you know, I was not bound to those, I, I've always been the kind of writer where I, I, I like, you know, I, 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 I want my stuff to at least rhyme. Um, you know, I, and so we had, for example, Evan Peel, who is, um, uh, you know, comes from, a, uh, a, a, a more of a hard bitten planet. And so he is, he is um, a character who, uh, you know, is streetwise and tough. Um, and, and we do see him, uh, you know, having sort of, you know, gruff, uh, heavy accent uh, 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 in terms of, in terms of, he doesn't sound like he comes from the same place that everybody else does uh, in, in the cartoons, in the Clone Wars when we see him. Uh, and, and, you know, some of his original, um, you know, comics history, uh, has to get reshaped a little bit, uh, because, you know, after that we, you know, knew that, okay, uh, most of these people did not 
spend their entire childhood uh, on these planets. Most of them spent their childhood with the Jedi Order in some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. But I, but I wrote that Evan went back; that he discovered his uh, uh, roots. Um, you know, we kind of have that as well with uh, with Deepa Balaba, where um, you know I I had um, you know I, I had histories for these characters that. You know, some of them began in the Phantom Menace and a visual guide or encyclopedia or something like that, where it was just a paragraph. And some of that, some of that content uh, is, is no longer operational, as they say, uh, in the sense that, in the sense that, you know, you, you know Clone Wars or not Clone Wars, but uh, uh, um, you know, it, it ends up getting tweaked by how things are as we see the Jedi Order uh, in Attack of the Clones. Uh, but I did want to sort of show that she came from um, this part of the galaxy that we were exploring uh, in the novel, uh, where you know it is it is not uh, the best place uh, anymore because it is it is a trade route that is going straight into hut space, and um, you know this is yeah it, it, i i worked hard figuring out where i wanted to set things and i knew that i wanted it to be near where she had if not grown up that she would have actually um visited there and become more familiar with it uh and that she would take it personally uh what was going on there uh and uh, and so so yeah i uh i had a spreadsheet out. I was keeping track of things, who was where and when at what times. Uh, and, uh, and I certainly got a lot of help from the staff at Random House and at Lucasfilm. I, I love the thought put into where the story would take place and what part of the galaxy. I definitely walked away with more appreciation for Deepa, Peel, I also really loved Sacy Teen more yeah. than I thought. So, did you walk away from writing this book with a new favorite Jedi? Um, yeah, I, uh, new favorite pairings to write. I mean, uh, 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 writing, um, uh, writing uh, Master Plo and and Sacy uh, together again. That's another pairing uh, of characters where it's clear that they're best friends. And it's clear that uh, you know he is um, you know he's 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 got a, a, a the the pH level on you know his his uh, his acidic uh, uh, you know, feeling about things he's, he's he's the gruffest of all of them uh, and and he really is one of the ones that would be on the council very skeptical about. Uh, yeah, what what Qui Gon is is challenging them to do, uh, which is you know get out of this room and 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 start to start start to um, you know interact as as you once did, and we kind of learn over the course of this book that um, you know he never really was that good at the interacting part. He would, was never that good at um, uh, he, he preferred working with machines. He preferred mm -hmm. working with. He preferred flying. He was somebody who, you know, we all know in all sorts of of, of business uh, situations uh, and and other other organizations uh, where um, you know he was probably just good enough with this stuff to get to the next level and and do the things he excelled at and and he prefers to do the things he excels at. Uh, but but you know, Plo Koon is kind of going. Uh, Okay, my friend, um, but you you uh, you clearly uh, you, you clearly aren't in this just uh, for these reasons. You clearly, at one time or another, uh, you know, did have to actually interact with folks, uh, and uh, and uh, and and he and and Plo Koon comes away with the notion after the end of this book, uh, where he's saying, "Well, yeah, but you know, maybe somebody, maybe we need somebody who." Uh, is is the tough love guy uh is the snap to it is the is the person who says um okay yeah um qui-gon go uh, <laughs> we, we've 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 uh, we've heard this before uh maybe we yeah there's 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 12 seats on this council um they uh they need to have uh some uh different uh approaches and different styles and uh you know, uh, I think I think uh, was it Plo Koon, 
uh, declares that uh, if if Stacey has a catchphrase, its competence is not enough uh, because he is demanding. And uh, and you know that is that is something where again there was nothing in the books, uh, there was nothing in the comics, there was nothing in the movie beforehand that suggested that exact phrase. Uh, but I I felt like you know this kind of rhymed with the uh, with what I had seen of him. Mm. There are several connections with the Jedi Council and Quinn, the planet they go to. They they take us back to the High Republic and the Jedi of that time. What was it like to dip your toes into that era with Yaddle yeah. and, of course, Yoda, Oppo, yeah. Uriel? Well, the, again, they had all been present there. Uh, and I wanted to show that we were at the end of something. I wanted to show that we were at the end of an era and that the good times... Uh, they're conscious that the good times are probably over or ending uh, unless they do something about it. Uh, and uh, you get the sense that the next generation has has seen all these things and heard all these stories. But the age of making monuments is over. Uh, the age of uh, making you know the big things is over. The 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 uh, the, the great works of the galaxy. They're no longer doing those. They haven't done those. And so what I did was I added a great work of the galaxy, uh, or, or a great work of the high Republic. I, I added this, uh, to, um, uh, you know, it, it, it happened that since, uh, you know, we were 200 years before Phantom Menace when, uh, the high Republic is, 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 uh, beginning or two, 200 years before a year before I I'm like, okay, well that will, that will work. Because I can make the uh, the events on Quen a my bicentennial celebration of what is happening here, and it can confront everybody with, all right, this is this big thing we did once, and um, you know it is the what, what the line of something uh, in there the the gem cities have started to lose their luster, uh, mm -hmm. they've started to lose their their shine uh, because of what's happened, and uh, and uh, you know I. Yeah, I'm dealing with the fact that the the reader already knows what is going to happen in the future here to this council and to the Republic. Uh, and I need to illustrate that. And I need to illustrate the rot that's going on at the, on the Republic side of things. Uh, and we get to see significant amount of that with Palpatine, with, mm -hmm. uh, with uh, the chancellor. Um, and, and we get to see, that weighing hard on uh, Adi Galia and and Yoda, uh, in particular, um, you know, that was that was a pairing I chose on purpose because I wanted young and old uh, mm -hmm. with uh, with with them. Um, Yoda going like, you know, this is we've been having these meetings for four hundred years, five hundred years, six hundred years, and Adi is is stuck in his madness now, or he's, she's or not as mad. She's stuck in the madness. Now she's stuck in the nightmare of having to sort of take notes uh, on everything that the Republic wants uh, from the Jedi. And, you know, they have to themselves broker. Okay. These are the things we're going to do. And these are the things we're not going to do. And, um, and I, I, I really, I think that first section of the book is so important because it takes us through a day in the life of all of the Jedi counselors as they are now. Uh, but it also, um, uh, you know, shows, uh, you know, why, uh, the, they really need to get out of the room. Uh, why they, why they, why, why uh, their lives have been changed, how their lives have been changed by what's going on and how, uh, how attached to the cell phone they've become, basically. <laughs> how 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 impossible it's become for them to go out and do something. Um, you know, I've 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 said several times before, uh, and we don't actually say it here, but I I because I, I was tempted to actually use it, but uh, Qui Gon kind of alludes to it, uh, where he says, "What was the last time any of you have told somebody?" Uh, not to do something self-destructive, um, and and I'm alluding there to the line in in uh, in uh, Attack of the Clones, which was just a joke, uh, but it was not a joke. Um, you don't want to sell me death sticks. You want to go home and and rethink your life. That's something the Jedi should be doing a lot of, and they're not. Um, they should actually be 
you know, out there talking to the people. And, and uh, in addition to, you know, being unpaid police force uh, and, uh, and all the other things they do, um, you know, they should, they should be out there, uh, you know, trying to uh, make the world a better place, uh, the galaxy a better place. Uh, and, uh, and they're really not able to because of how things have developed and it's not all their fault. It's, you know, Palpatine has kind of maneuvered them into this place. That's, that's like the, the perfect amount of Palpatine in this book too. Yeah. You used him so well, some fun lines about uh, what color he always imagined the office being, <laughs> but also you can see how a Sith Lord hides in plain sight within all this bureaucracy and stuff. Uh, it, it worked so great. Well, that I, I want to credit Tom Holler, my editor, with that because he found an image somewhere of uh, of uh, the Chancellor's office, uh, and and I, I'm like, okay, let's let's do a thing here about about the color of the office, uh, and uh, again, you know, just fun discovered moments we were able to do. Nice. Um, I wanted to talk about Pell Balo, who we kind of, oh, yeah. we, we flirted about talking with him in yeah. the non-spoiler section. He was a really fun surprise to see him resurface again after the short story orientation. Uh, how did you come to that decision to bring him in as a younger man? Um, so, you know, orientation, uh, which is, which is, uh, is the race loan story with, uh, he's, he's the, he's sort of the head of, uh, this flying um, uh, uh, training ship. When we see him in that story, and he is uh, he is uh, a commanding officer uh, when Ray Sloan is a cadet. Um, I I wanted to have a character that could pick up on elements that I really got into in Knights of the Old Republic, which is that. Um, okay, completely aside from any criticism we might have about the Jedi Council. Uh, the Jedi are a really rotten deal for the Republic, uh, if you think about it, because, yes, they provide this free, you know, uh, police force. They provide uh, uh, this, this uh, you know, they, they provide peace and, and, and order and justice in the galaxy. But every so often, one of them goes off of the beam and, and you know, you get a, you get a war. Uh, you get, a, you get a, at least, at least in the EU, you know, with the you know, Knights of the Old Republic at the time. Uh, and I kind of had um, you know, the um, that dynamic going on in Knights of the Old Republic with Saul Karath responding to Zane, and then later on uh, Zane's commanding officer, what Zane is in the military, uh, Dallin Morvis. Uh, you know, but I I, I kind of had that where they're going, okay, you guys, you're 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 we have these priests that are on these ships essentially uh, that that. You know, later on, they'll declare themselves generals, uh, and and you know we have to go ever, wherever they tell us to do. And I wanted Pal Balo to already be aggrieved by the fact that there is no Republic Navy. There's this mm -hmm. um, sort of ad hoc thing going on that involves you know, local interdictor fleets for the uh, uh, you know for for anti piracy efforts. Plus, you know, insurance companies would hire people to do things. Plus, every so often, um, and and this goes back to the Napoleonic stuff that you know my 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 uh, you know my 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 Republic Navy fans are are, are going to love because they love it when I, I refer back to this. You know, the letters of Mark, where they would give a a captain of a ship, uh, you know, permission to go out and hunt pirates. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'll, we'll pay you this much for every um, one you catch. And, and that's what we have um, in, uh, in Balo here and the ship Assurance, uh, which is, you know, half of the staffers on the ship are these old timers who have been with them forever. And the other half are these brats. Uh, who, uh, and again, this, this is Napoleonic in nature, you know, the second sons, as they would say, uh, the ones who are not going to inherit everything, it would, they, they'd find positions in the Navy. Uh, and and, um, and uh, they're, they're there really just to make a, a name for themselves so that they can run for office one day, uh, run for Senate or something like that. And so he's very put upon, he's very aggrieved, at the book's open, he's already been 
uh, attached to um, you know Deepa's uh, mission. And it, every time he tries to get something done, he's interrupted by the Jedi needing something. And and I thought he is the perfect person to have uh, in Mace's arc because Mace. Uh, I wanted to put somebody up against Mace who is just as strong, just of a character, just as determined, uh, and really, really un, yeah, 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 unsold on the value of Jedi. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that's what we did here, I think. Um, and uh, I I think yeah, you know, we were talking about who my favorite character right in this in this series was. Uh, in this book was, I, he was a, he was a blast uh, because um, you know I I I really do think that uh, there is that dynamic going on. Um, you know, there's a character in the third season of Picard um, uh, that Todd Stashwick plays uh, the uh, the captain of of the Titan uh, who really doesn't want anything to do with Picard and Riker running around playing cowboy and taking over his ship and doing insane things. Um, I, I, I just I have to feel that the regular Navy of which there really isn't one yet uh, at this point in Star Wars, uh, that somebody who is there representing the institutions, uh, representing um, uh, you know, uh, representing discipline, representing uh, or you know, a, a, our institution as opposed to your institution, the Jedi. I wanted him to be there uh, representing for that, uh, and uh, of course, you know, uh, we we see in this in 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 uh, the story many years later. Uh, that uh, you know, uh, he uh, finds a finds a different ending uh, for himself. Um, uh, but it still, is still the, button heads with force users. But it's the absolute. <laughs> but it's absolutely perfect. I mean, in terms of in terms of the kind of character that we see, uh, he is somebody who would tell both the Emperor and Darth Vader to their face, "Get off my ship," mm-hmm. <laughs> to the extent that that works. Uh, you also, as part of the crew of the Assurance, brought back a young man named Veers. And I'm always curious to know, for anyone who brings Veers into a story, how happy they're going to make just one person on Twitter. Uh, Yeah, well, he came to visit at uh, New York Comic Con. He dropped by. He had already been told by uh, by, (laughs) by somebody at Random House. And um, it wasn't a stunt. Um, I, I had... I had written to Tom and I said, look, I've, I've counted the years. I know how old he is. Um, there's no army right now, so he can't be training to be a general, but I can make him, I can put him on, on this ship and make him not exactly fit to be a helm officer as we establish at the end. Uh, and, uh, and uh, of course we have that lovely line. Uh, I think Pablo said, how is it that nobody has ever made that joke before? Uh, <laughs> you don't want somebody named Veers flying the ship. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, I, I wanted to show that he was one of these, uh, you know, children of, um, of, uh, you know, of wealth that uh, would have uh, been somebody that, uh, you know, Balo would have been saddled with. Uh, and, uh, you know, at, at this point, again, it's too early for him to be associated with the army, uh, but he can be part of the, uh, the beginning of the Navy. Uh, and, um, you know, the question always was whether Lucasfilm would, would go for it. They said, yeah, we're here for it. Um, it, because it fit, it fit. I, it, it, it was, it was, it was a, it was a character who, um, you know, we were always worried about the small galaxy thing, but, you know, as we have as we have established with Balo and who he is uh, already, uh, and who would have been on his ship, um, the, uh, Veers is exactly one of the people that would have been on that ship that would have found his way to being trained for however long uh, by Balo, and and that helps sell Balo too, because um, you know for people who have not read this story, which at least I'm glad it's available. Uh, Star Tra- Star Wars, the fiction collection, volume one from uh, Titan, uh, still available out there in hardcover. Um, you know, for, for people that, uh, you know, don't necessarily know, um, this is a character that will become foundational to 
uh, the Republic Navy uh, when it comes more into being. And uh, the fact that Veers is there helps sell that. The Lobber, Gore, and Wongo <laughs> group, uh, they became some of my favorite characters in the book. Uh, they they were who you mentioned for comic relief in our non-spoiler discussion. So how did you develop their arc and especially their wonderful relationship with Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon? That section grew the most. That entire bit was not on the page in the beginning. Um, they were... Yes, they were on. They were. They were. They were in the outline as the three characters that they that uh, the Jedi would save the um, uh, save the ship from, but that was it. And I realized, okay, I want to show sort of the kind of people that are being attracted to um, you know the pirates uh, in 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 this in this part of the world. Uh, but I also I wanted to keep um, Qui Gon and Obi Wan. Uh, sort of at arm's length from the rest of the story for a significant part of it. And I I wanted to have a, a running relationship with them such that we actually get some little bit of growth within them, even though Lover doesn't get any smarter. Uh, we do see some, some nuance in what happens to those characters as it, as it goes along. And, and more importantly, Qui-Gon reaches i think it's so important that qui-gon has the last you know chapter in this book because he has the first one in the book quite and 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 they're and 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 they're in the beginning of the book and they're in the end of the book as well they bookend it where qui-gon realizes yeah this isn't just about we need to we need to save the people on this ship we should have figured out a way to help them too we should have figured out a way we didn't have time and the biggest problem with the Jedi is they don't have time to do all these things. And that's that's really a big, a big, a big part of this. But Qui-Gon realizes, you know what, if 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 we had, you know, not just drop them off on the next random planet, uh, if, if we had, uh, you know, found something for them, uh, some help direction, them go to, home and rethink their life. Yeah. If, if we <laughs> if we if we had helped them somehow. Um, that would have been the thing to do. And Qui-Gon sees it as the living force probably is what's bringing them back together like that. Um, that they're, they're, that is that causing them to cross paths. That that's great. Uh, speaking of the pirates, the major villains of the living force are pirates, but, uh, Depa Balaba also points out that Maz Kanata, a pirate queen, isn't the worst neighbor to have. So, what do you think it is that makes a good pirate versus a bad pirate in Star Wars? Um, well, this is interesting. You know, I was uh, I was actually writing a, a, a pirate graphic novel at the same time because I had, I uh, I wrote uh, uh, actually before this before this I had just written um, uh, the comics for a video game called Skull and Bones, which is a video game that just came out from Ubisoft, uh, and so I had completed that before this project started. But I that gave me some time to actually look up some old you know pirate histories and pirate stories and and, and that sort of thing and um, you know it, it, it's 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 really all about the connections and the contacts and knowing the neighbors uh, and um, you know the the uh, the plan that Zalastra uh, who is sort of the you know the 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 Maz Kanata in this the pirate queen in this. The plan that she has is not that far fetched. Um, uh, you know, there in the Caribbean, there was an attempt at a free a free state run by pirates. Um, uh, you know, friendly. Um, you can very easily see a friendly state to the um, uh, to the huts existing on the fringes of uh, your republic space, which would be making its own deals with the the trade federation making its own deals with various others um and you know what she does doesn't fit into what palpatine wants and you know he ultimately doesn't think it's going to work and it didn't work um uh, and and that was something that i had looked at all through was you know to what extent was he going to be you know uh, observing this involved in this and i decided how much it would be it would it would be it would be very it would be minimal but but he would have been aware of it and impressed by her willingness to do things. Uh, but uh, again, you know, I think um, 
they have their own uh, dynamics. They have their own group dynamics uh, in, 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 that 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 they're dealing with that prevents them from unifying. That prevents them from uh, cooperating. That prevents them from ever being an effective force against the Jedi. Uh, and you know, it, 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 I, I wanted to create uh, a pirate who was enough of a strategist, enough of a card player, of course, as we see that metaphor all throughout the, the book with her, uh, where she would see, okay, the only way that we're going to ever be able to to beat all these trump cards, which the Jedi are, which the counselors are, is is by, you know, sort of joining forces and um, not fighting with each other. And, um, and we have to construct the rewards such that everybody will want to play. Uh, and we have to construct the pain that they're going to suffer uh, uh, as well. And, and of course, that is that's a big portion of the book, too, is is her engineering the situation that uh, we see in the book. Hmm. What is it you think that separates uh, Maz Kanata from Zalastra? What makes her uh, like an OK pirate? <laughs> well, I, I think I, I think she uh, does not see well the 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 does not see the Jedi as a, you know, a mortal enemy from the start. And, um, you know, I think, I think, uh, you know, Zalastra's, uh, 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 her view is clouded, uh, by her personal history and, mm. uh, you know, a smarter, uh, person in that situation would be able to come up with win-win situations. Um, that's really what Zalastra is doing. She's trying to come up with a win-win situation for everybody, uh, but that also, you know, uses the pirate tactics of, and if you don't, I'll, I'll, I'll blow you up. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll explode things in your vicinity. Um, uh, yeah, but, but I, I think she really does fail, uh, in the end, uh, because, um, she's, she's just too alone. Um, uh, she has, she has, her, she has her people surrounding her, uh, that are, that are helping her. Uh, but she, uh, you know, in her own gang. Uh, but uh, one of the things that we establish about the Rift Walkers from the beginning is they're really sort of the outsiders. And she tries to act on these other four groups, which I spent a good deal of time as you know developing who and you know what the, what their what their deals were. Um, but she never really makes any allies in those groups until you know, uh, until, you know, her, her, uh, her big, uh, you know, her big, uh, attempt here to take things over. And, uh, you know, you, th you would think that Maz was smarter than that. Hmm. Well, that's the end of my questions. So we can start to wrap things up, but where can people find you at upcoming cons? Where can they follow you online? And what other stories would you recommend Star Wars fans check out? Okay, April 8, after April sixteenth, we will have announced that I'm at C two E two again, and so I'm I'm in the writers uh, block. Uh, I uh, uh, I believe uh, I believe table two in the writers block uh, that is in Chicago at the McCormick Place, uh, and I am assuming by then we will we will have announced that uh, I am at GalaxyCon Oklahoma City, and. Um, that is the first event they have had there, and uh, I, I have done the other Galaxy Cons, uh, and uh, and excited to be able to go there. And, and if I haven't announced it yet, I just did. So, <laughs> uh, but then there are, are, are a, a variety of other uh, conventions coming along. Uh, people can find me at farawaypress.com, uh, my website where I have behind the scenes notes on many of my stories. Uh, including that uh, that uh, Pell Balo story there. It'll be a while before I get the Living Force notes up because there's a lot of notes there. Uh, but that's uh, that's on there uh, on Twitter, JJM Far Away, and on Instagram, Facebook, and um, uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, 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 Threads, and TikTok. I am John Jackson Miller. And of course, the Living Force has been out for about a week now. If you haven't read it already. Uh, why'd you watch this video? But if you haven't, uh, go check it out. It's a really fun slice of life story with the Jedi Council, bunch of fun characters in it. Thank you so much again for taking some time out of your busy day to talk with all of us. And to all of you who watched or listened along, thank you so much and may the force be with you.